Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where again, we're going to show you how we use QuickBooks Online in our accounting software to manage our real estate business, our construction business, our remodeling business, any of that. All right. So we're following up on the other parts of the video series. If you haven't checked those out yet, I recommend you do so uh, to help you lead into exactly what we're doing here. And certainly check out at the end of the uh, episode here at the end of the video we're gonna have a link to a brand new free download that you can get a six-step guide to setting up QuickBooks online for your real estate business so definitely check that out it's a really good way to set the foundation make sure you're doing things right from the get-go and also checking out some of those almost hidden features of QuickBooks that can really help your your business out all right so check that out toward the end but for now we're gonna get into um, another another idea around tracking rehab expenses and getting them onto your balance sheet the right way. The last video we talked about how you can track them to a more generic account and use classes to, to differentiate which one goes where, which is a great way to do it. I'm going to show you potentially a more common way to do it where we're going to have specific asset accounts for our different buildings and we're going to use a year-end journal entry to move our capital improvements out of kind of a general account and into the building specific account. All right, so let's jump into that. I'm gonna pull up the balance sheet here just so you can recall what we were at, where we were at during the last video. Remember that I had more generic accounts here and I used classes to understand where I spent the money, okay? Which is a good way to do it potentially. Because remember, when we set up our products and services, you can only tie each product and service to one and only one expense account or asset account. So you can't say like, okay, I spent on Rough Electric for 123 Main Street. I spent on Rough Electric for 456 Maple and go to the right accounts. You can't do that. It needs to go to one place. All right, so what we did is we used classes to differentiate. But what I'm going to do today is we're going to change this to be specific to a property. And I'm going to show you how to use kind of a rolling improvement account and then transfer it at the end of the year. All right, so let's do that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my chart of accounts and I'm gonna change this building back to 123 Main Street. I want it to be more a, of a specific setup. So I'm gonna to go to chart of accounts and I'm just gonna to go to uh, here and edit those, all right? So I'm going to just add here 123 Main Street and then I'm gonna do 123 Main Street building, right? So that it's more specific and when I'm calling upon these accounts in my transactions, I'll know exactly where it's going to. So I just copied it and I'm pasting it down. Now I'm not going to add 456 Maple to this now, um, just because it'll take a little bit, but um, you'll get the idea of how that would work, all right? So 123 Main Street is throughout. I'll click Save. Now this is gonna be wrong in that if I go back to my balance sheet, you're gonna see that I have capital improvements for 456 Maple showing up at 123 Main Street. That is not correct, you know, it didn't, didn't happen that way. So let's let's adjust that. I'm gonna to go to my products and services. And actually before I do that, let's do one other thing. We have to create our, um, our rolling accounts. All right, so back to chart of accounts. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create generic rolling capital improvement accounts that are going to hold that inventory throughout the year and then I'm gonna transfer it at the end, all right? So new, fixed asset, call it buildings, and let's do five-year improvements, all right? Just really general, okay? No depreciation on this, just save and close. All right, um, there it is down there. And then I'm gonna do one more for structural improvements. All right, let's go fixed asset, let's go building, and let's go structural improvements, save it and close it. Okay, so I have those two accounts are now ready for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer those the spending I did out of the one two three Main Street specific ones. Okay, so if I go to products and services, I'm going to reset. So appliances is currently going to because I changed the name of it one two three Main Street five year. And I'm going to change that to be this more general one, which is five year improvements. Okay, just this general one. Now, really, really important. Make sure you click this box here because there's past transactions that are going to one, two, three Main Street five year. If you don't click this box, you'd have to go through manually and update them, all right? So save and close. All right, demolition, that goes to structural. Right now it's going to one, two, three Main Structural. I don't want it to. So I'm gonna start typing, go structural improvements and click that button, save and close. And then rough electric. Structural improvements, 
update the historical transactions, save and close. All right, so what does that do to my balance sheet? If I go back to my balance sheet, we'll see that now I have those items are in structural improvements and five-year improvements. They fell out of the property specific ones. So this is what I recommend. To be honest with you, this is what I do, right? So I set up these accounts and throughout the year, I track all of my spending to these kind of holding accounts and I tag them with a class so I always know what property they're for. And then at the end of the year, I make a journal entry and that's the journal entry I'm gonna show you right now. So I have 1400 that I spent for one, two, three main and five year improvements. I have 7450 I spent in structural improvements. I'm gonna transfer those over to the asset accounts so that my accountant knows where they go, okay? I'm not gonna to touch Maple for now because I don't have the asset set up yet. All right, so let's do this. You're gonna do this at the end of the year. You're gonna go new journal entry. Now it's at the end of the year, so make your journal entry at 12-31-2018. And we have two accounts that we need to credit. We need to get rid of the money in there and two asset accounts that we need to debit. We need to add money to them, okay? So um, we have to take the money out of five-year improvements and we have 1,400 there. And you can just call this year-end uh, transfer to building asset, all right? Track the class. Structural improvements, we're gonna have another 7450, I think it was, yep. And now let's put that back where it should be, 123 Main Street, CapEx, five-year basis. I'm gonna put 1400 there. And then 123 Main Street, structural improvement basis, I'm gonna put 7450 there, log it and they save and close. Okay, so now what happened there is for 123 Main Street, I zeroed out my five-year improvements and structural improvements and they fell into where they belong, the five-year basis and the, the structural basis. All right, and then my accountant sees those all in one place. So again, this is kind of the way I like to do it because I, it shows me on my balance sheet how much 123 Main Street is worth, right? And the depreciation is tracked that way too. So I like this way. now. So where those go, remember you can always drill down into these. So if I click on this, it will show me for 2018, I spent on a new range, a new refrigerator, got me up to 1400, and then at the end of the year, I transferred it out, okay? And it's a really cool way to do it. You have one journal entry at the end of the year that tracks everything so you know where, like why did it leave and where did it go? But make sure you check with your CPA, of course, and all of this stuff. See what they recommend, how they want you to do it. Um, certainly for the different uh, depreciation schedules you'll want to check with them but also just in the mechanics of setting this up it would be interesting you know to have that discussion with them and make sure this method or whatever method that you choose works all right so um, hope you enjoyed that again this is the way I do it I like to take this and I'll like roll this up and say okay well just tell me how much is this property worth all right 123 500 plus my capex plus my land 180 800 and that's less the depreciation as well right so that per the books it's exactly right of course that's not the market value and you'll never have your market value in your books you really shouldn't your market value will be realized if and when you sell it okay so um that's that's like the best way to do it that way it matches your your taxes all right so uh hope you enjoyed that it's a little bit complicated if you have any questions about it feel free to add them to the comments or email me directly nick at incomedigs.com we're going to kind of wrap up this series of videos where we're talking about real estate accounting and improvements and everything and we're going to transition for the next next week we're going to get into property management which is pretty exciting you can kind of run your accounting for uh, property management right out of quickbooks so i'm going to show you how to do that and different uh, strategies for that. So check that out. If you have anything specific on this or the previous videos that you want to talk about further, let me know. If you have any property management questions, get ahead of the game, let me know that as well. We'll be talking about those next week. Don't forget your free download. It's free of charge. It just gives you a good way to, um, you know, kind of a checklist to go through as you're setting up QuickBooks. Make sure you have everything in the right order. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Mm -hmm.